Hello everyone, good to see you here, Paul Tranny, uh, and this is the Daily Creative Challenge. This is day four, super fun being here. I wanna thank you for showing up as well. Nancy, your hair's looking really good today, Nancy, I'm into it. Uh, Aria, Sam, Dave, good to have you guys here. Uh, so, so yes, we have uh, started. So um, I'm gonna dive into this, super fun day. We're gonna deal with type, distorting type. Did you know the type tool is the number one used tool outside of the selection tool, just the, the actual selection tool? The type tool is the most used tool. That's why today is awesome. Uh, so hello, Lee and Susan and everyone. But let's go ahead and take a look at my desktop. Uh, and you can see we have day one, two, three, day three. I want to just thank everybody for participating in the challenges. We'll kind of quickly review some of these. And uh, you can see a number of them. Uh, the original asset was a skull and a face. And you guys are learning how to uh, deal with um, blend modes selections and masks. That's huge. Those three things are awesome, right? You can see right here, this is beautiful. Araco did a fantastic job by adding these additional little elements. Um, so yes, it's looking good. We have an album cover that was from uh, day one. This is day two. Cutting out and selecting images. Got this dark one. I like everybody's interpretation of these. Here's uh, Eva Nora did sort of a, a dark sort of, I don't know, moonlight version. You could use um, a color lookup table for that because there's actually like a midnight version. But yeah, everybody's doing a great job. I love it when we see personal photos of you and when you show sort of the before and after. So great job, Ton. I will say there's a little distortion with this image, but other than that, it's like fantastic, right? Um, yeah, everybody's doing so well. Got some of these flowers. By the way, where do some of these flowers come from, Carla? Where did I get these flowers to make this version? Uh, let's just jump into Photoshop. If you go to File, New, under Art and Illustration, guess what? We give you free graphics. So that's where I got those flowers, right? It is the Enchanted Watercolor Kit. So feel free to take advantage of those free assets. All right, let's dive into it. Uh, the file you get, you get today, and by the way, just so we're clear, this is day three. Uh, just, it's uh, behind setup forward slash challenge forward slash Photoshop distorting type. Uh, we can get started right here. You can see what it says. This is the asset city pride because that's what I want you to celebrate today. Uh, whether it's city pride, country pride, whatever the case may be, that's the subject matter. I really like uh, learning the nicknames of cities, which I think is interesting. Uh, so, you know, I live in Denver, so this would uh, be awesome for you to do. Uh, I live in Denver. It's known as the Mile High City, as many of you know. It was also known as uh, Queen of the Plains. And because what many people don't realize is that Denver is actually like on the plains uh, at the base of the foothills there. So, um, Feel free, I would love to see the nicknames of the city that or place you live, whatever that may be. I'm from Pueblo, which is Home of Heroes is its nickname. But go ahead and use that and we're gonna kinda composite that with uh, just a quick cityscape. Um, we'll do Mile High City right now. So all I'm doing is I use the text tool right over here. I clicked once, click, and then type in Mile High City is what I'm doing. Okay, for this starter file, by the way, the reason there's already text in there is because I wanted to show you it will automatically sync that font to your desktop if you have uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, CC, it will sync that font automatically, which is awesome. What is that font? Well, let's go into the properties panel off to the side, Museo Sans, right? Ooh, here we go. So thank you, Kathleen. Oh, this is so fun. Wait, Emerald City, where's, what's Emerald City? I might need to know, Chad, because that's awesome. Buckeye City. Um, um, what is Buckeye City? Is I, uh, Iowa? Ohio. Ohio? Yeah. Sorry, I don't know exactly, but this is super fun. So I like hearing this, by the way. Another fun one is Rose City. That's, uh, that's Portland. 
I don't know what San Francisco's nickname is. Is it just City by the Bay? City by the Bay. Come on, guys. We need something better than that. City by the Bay? Ah, you just described it. It's not interesting. Anyways, I'll stop. Let me zoom out. Here's the text. I've typed this in, Mile High City. I see all the properties off to the side in this properties panel, which is fantastic, right? So now a first class citizen, all of these properties, I don't need to worry about jumping into paragraph or character panel because all that content's off to the side. So if I decide I want to make this all caps, click right there, now it's all caps. Oh, the eternal city, Rome, ah, that's so good. Uh, so check this out, I'm gonna pull out this properties panel. I'm gonna probably deal with um, a sans serif, but as I take a look at these fonts right in here, I'm gonna click right in here to uh, the specific uh, font that I'm looking for. And I have obviously all of these options. So I will go through here and kind of change this to sans serif and maybe look for the Creative Cloud fonts, for instance. And I can grab more fonts from uh, the web, as you may or may not know, click right there. It's the Adobe fonts that I'm launching into. And from there, I can type in Mile High City to see how this looks, right? Pretty straightforward. By the way, Ken Cowley and Eric, you can also go to uh, Word. I've shown this before, Word Mark. Dot .it Check this out. Wordmark.it this is bonus info by the way. This will display all the um, fonts on your desktop in whatever you type in here. So Mile High City enter. These are all the fonts on my desktop, not just my Adobe fonts. It's all of them. So I can kind of peruse these, see which ones. It's kind of easier to see to be honest with you. Uh, Avenir Next Heavy, really like that one. That's one I might go with. Let's do that. Avenir Next Heavy, AV. Turn off any filters you might have, by the way. So if the font's not showing up, that's a problem. Avenir. There we go. Oh yeah, super chunky. Let's make it all caps. Bam, press that button. This will throw people off, especially if you're new to Photoshop, is uh, you know it, this all caps button might be pressed and it might throw you for a loop if you're not used to it. So that looks good, Mile High City, done. Move that off to the side. I have pictures in here. I can take a photo right outside my window. Yeah, I wish, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you know how it's like a clear day. Let's get into uh, playing with this text right in here. I can take this text first off, uh, and second off, what I need to do is I need to adjust the spacing, the line spacing. I'll do that right over here. Uh, instead of having this set to auto or 72, I wanna do 420. Oh, how appropriate for Mile High City. 420, that will make it just single line height is what I'm doing. I just wanted it a little bit more compressed. And for all these numbers, guess what? If there's a number field, the icon next to it, if you scrub on it, you can change that particular number because we want to work visually. We'll go like that, done, boom, boop. For this text, I want this image to appear inside of this text, right? So what do we do? We'll right click on that image and we will create a clipping mask, okay? This is the easiest thing you can do to make type look cool, okay? Uh, create clipping mask, boom, there it is, Mile High City, and we can see it in there. I can take this text now, I can scale it up just like an image. And this is a key thing I kinda wanna talk about. Text is treated just like any other element in Photoshop with a couple of variations that I wanna get into, okay? Oh good, Gina, you like Avenir a lot? I've been using Avenir lately a lot. You know why? Because it has lots of variations. Um, yeah, lots of variations. By the way, another one I like to use a lot, and by the way, since even though there's a clipping mask on this, which looks cool, uh, I could go in here and change the font still. So I'll actually jump in. Uh, I'll pick like Acumen, this variable concept font. I'll use this a lot as well. Well, anytime you see a variable font, if I select that, I get these options off to the side, which allows me to control the weight, width, and slant. So here you can see it looks kind of thin. Let's crank it up. 
make it thicker, make it thicker like that, because we want to reveal more of that image, right? We'll adjust the spacing in between those letters like so, and there we have it, okay? Fantastic, super, super straightforward, I think. This is Mile High City, I think this is kind of, this is really straightforward. We could have some fun with this as well. I can take the image that's inside of it and I can flip it. Command T will allow you to change anything, including type. Command T will allow you to transform something. And then if you right click, you have the ability to uh, manipulate it some more. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and flip vertical, right? Mile high city. I'm just making the city look like really high up in the air. Something like that might be a little, little bit more interesting. Hmm. It's okay. <laughs> All right, let's do some more with this text. You ready for this? With this text selected, we're gonna to go to edit, transform, right? And this is what I was talking about. Like some things you actually can't do with type that you can do with an image, at least at first glance. Cause you're like, ah, oh, shoot. I wanted to distort this text to make it look really tall. Okay, distorts not highlighted. All that means is I need to turn this into a smart object. So right over here with this layer, right click and we'll convert it to a smart object. Since this is a daily creative challenge, smart object is a Photoshop file within a Photoshop file. So it converts it into a nice little protected independent little uh, Photoshop file. So convert to smart object. I know it's a smart object because it has this little icon right there. Shoop. And now it's gonna honestly gets treated pretty much like anything else. So now when I go to edit, transform, oh, now I can see distort is what I can select now, okay? All right, it's kind of an oxymoron mile, mile high, but the sky is low. Yeah, it's lower, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Uh, distort is what I'm gonna pick, okay? Right in here, notice, I can grab any one of these points and distort allows me to manipulate this any way I want. So I can make this look really tall by grabbing each one of these corners, not worrying too much about um, revealing more than just the photo, it's not a big deal, but I can go ahead and manipulate that like so, okay? There we have Mile High City, grabbing this middle point, something like that, making it look really large, okay? Fantastic, done, done. Take this text, let's move this down. And uh, yeah, Star Wars style. It is kind of Star Wars style. Yes, thank you, Paco. Hopefully you're into that. All right. All right. So that's one way to treat this. It's like a thousand other things we can do. Um, I'm actually going to duplicate this and make a different version because guess what? There's, again, a thousand other things we can do, right? Here's another version, by the way. Check this out. Just showing you another example, right? Queen of the Plains, what did I do? I took an image, right? With some coloring back there, right? And what we have in here is we have, just like we use that uh, clipping mask for the photo, we are now using an image, right? Just like that. Turning this black image on, placing it like so. I can rewind this a little bit, just so you can see how this was made. Let's step it back. Maybe we'll throw some of these files in here really fast. Wait for it. Moving that up. There we are. Okay. So, um, Emerald City. That's another one I heard, right? Emerald City. We'll type that in. Wait for it. All right, there we go. 
Emerald City, we can play some, have some fun with fonts. I had somebody ask this question the other day in Discord, so that's why I want to address it really fast. Emerald City, capital E, we have alternate glyphs. So, like so, boom, boom, wait for it. We worked on colors and um, blend modes the other day. I'm just gonna drop a different gradient in there just to make this a little bit look a little bit more unique. Uh, I'm gonna type in Lust script display technically, right? To show you that uh, we can use fonts and these fonts have alternate glyphs. So there's more that meets the eye with these. So if I take a look at this L and I just select the L, look. Oh, I get all these alternate glyphs. It depends on the fonts. Uh, Lust Script Pro, honestly, or Script Display is one of my favorites. Edwardian is another one. A lot of script fonts have alternates and it means that they have these extra flourishes that you can add. So I can come in here, maybe that one goes down. Let's try this Y, selecting just that Y. Oh yeah, that's nice. Have that curl underneath like so. These are the alternate glyphs. If we wanted to take a closer look, we can open up the glyphs panel and you can see all of these, every single glyph for this particular font, right? All right, thank you, Michelle. We are on the same page. Here's Emerald City. I might wanna add some city images to it. We'll go to window down to graphics. Otherwise known as shapes, here we go, shapes. And we used this yesterday as well, but here's where I would grab some city images. So we have some skyline images in here. Grabbing it, dropping it in, right? It kind of references my last used color. I could always change that accordingly, right? Can change that to black and place that. In this case, I wanna place it inside of this text. Saw this earlier. All I need to do, right click, create clipping mask, like so. Cool. Let's adjust this accordingly, like so. Duplicating the layer, Command J, making sure it's clipped, like so. Moving that down here. Guess what, I wanna change the color. Let's change the color. Oops. If you click on the actual layer, you can change the color like I'm doing really fast, dropping that in like so. Done and done. Cool. Yes, Lust is a beautiful font, right? Totally into it, right? This is adding graphics. We haven't really distorted text a whole lot. Let's take a look at another example and really have some fun like distorting this text, okay? We've we've bent it into place, but we we can we can do even more with this, which I think is super fun. Uh, let's do this one. Slightly different example, and I apologize you do not have this file, but I wanted to just pull in this example saying, hey, you know what? Here we have some text. So many things I wanna do. I'm so glad, just so you know, I have a um, master class uh, at, uh, nine, well, basically in about 12 minutes where I'm gonna get into this in more depth. But check this out. If I really wanted to manipulate this text, again, I can select this text. If I go into the filter menu, I'll try to select, say, liquify, because that's what I do with an image. And it says, hey, you know what? You need to convert this to a smart object. So sometimes it'll be like, hey, we know what you're trying to do. Go ahead and convert it to that smart object. Right, there it is. Converted to that smart object. And liquify, we do that with photos. Guess what? We can do this with images. Uh, kind of coming here at the top with this first um, option right up here, which is all about warping. And I can just kind of push this up and have fun kind of bending some of this text like so. Right, I kind of want to wrap it. In fact, if I scroll down, I want to show the image behind it, right? So I can see kind of that backdrop and I can distort this along the lines of, of the photo since I could see it underneath. Clicking OK, there it is. Let's actually scale this into place too, by the way. It will temporarily disable that uh, particular filter, not to worry, right? Actually is there. There it is, let's move this into place. Let's go back into liquify. 
And I absolutely love that since it's a smart object, it doesn't destroy it. It protects those pixels. Chances are I misspelled something. I do that all the time. I don't know if you guys do that, Chad or anyone. I'm always like misspelling words because I treat them more as graphics and less as words. And then I'm like, uh, they're like, oh yeah, you, you spelled that wrong. But here it's distorting it um, using these various tools, clicking okay, and we can see it bend into place. And I could always switch and change the blend mode like I'm doing. I'd probably change this to overlay like so, right? So now we can see we're actually distorting that text. Um, and it's super easy to work with. Aria's never try to liquefy. Ah, it's the best. Let me open up and show you a couple other examples if you don't mind. And this is just to get you inspired. Let's take, let's just have some fun with this, right? I typically convert to a smart, a smart object, go into liquify. Here's my text. We'll make the brush a little bigger and we'll give it a little less pressure so it doesn't distort the text too much. And let's turn off showing the backdrop. And now I can make this text maybe look a little less predictable uh, as I kind of mess with it, you know? Great thing is, is I could always change that phrase. There, that's done. Super easy to do, right? Fantastic. You see how that's done? Guess what? You can start to see how this was made as well, right? How's that done? Essentially, with some color, and I have a lot going on here, um, but we'll take a look at this text. The text is actually being distorted uh, using Liquify. Right here it is, like that. So I encourage you, as far as this challenge goes, convert that text to a smart object and then start playing with effects and whatever message you're trying to convey, that is the goal. Sometimes it means not distorting the text. I like this, everything is changing. This kind of works out pretty well. Uh, what's happening in here, again, we looked at Liquify, but if I double click inside of this, you could see there's actually some other effects happening to this, actually some wind. This is getting a little advanced, but here's essentially a, um, a wind filter distorting this text, okay? This is gonna be part of my master class since I don't really have time to get into it right now, but it's like, okay, here's wind blowing it to the right and some more wind blowing that text to the left and then throwing some text on top as well. And now we have that the way we want it, all in one smart object, and then we can distort it from there. Yeah, glitch effect. Oh yeah. Dave, here you go, I'll show you glitch effect. Glitch. Glitch, exactly what you're looking for, right? So this is the idea. Make something cool. I would love to hear where everybody is from, to be honest with you, which is why I have this example right here and why I played with Emerald City. Would love to hear where you're from uh, and have some fun with it. And by the way, if you've been following along with me, you could really start stacking up all of these, all of these effects, one on top of the night, or like all these techniques. If you've been following me since day one, you could literally take, take a portrait, right? Take that portrait and you're gonna learn within the next hour how to warp that text around a face that we that I gave you guys on Monday and uh, how to play with that accordingly as well. You can see right here, right? So that's kind of what I'm showing you. Super fun. Jackie Waters from Indianapolis, super cool. Coming down to the last minute, I'm gonna click back over and just check Discord and again, highlight all our amazing uh, submissions that have been coming through. Keep them coming. Uh, even this design that we worked on yesterday, think about doing Dia, Dia de los Muertos or something like that. It's a very day of the dead. But if you even already have something that you're working on, you consider adding to that as well because I can easily see that text in here. So great job, Tan, Susan, uh, Flakes. Fascinating. Salt Lake City in the house. D. Ross is just Canadian. Don't want to get too specific. No, you don't. Let's not get too specific with where you live. <laughs> right? Loving this. Valerie as well. Gorgeous. Everybody's just doing a great job. Getting down to the last, uh, last 30 seconds. 
Um, this definitely needs to be an hour. Would love for it to be, but that's why we have the master class coming up next where we're going to be making all sorts of fun things. So I encourage you to hang out and uh, just stick around ultimately. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you Monday if you're doing the Daily Creative Challenge. Please submit to Discord. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be right back.